Hi everyone! So WebGPU is the emerging standard for GPU rendering for the web. It brings optimization for 3D rendering with browsers and is currently still in development. However, it is already possible to try it out, for example by downloading the Chrome Canary edition. Here you can enable an under construction web GPU implementation with a hidden flag. Having that activated, you may check out the web GPU examples. Also Babylon.js is an early adapter of web GPU. In their playground, you can switch to web GPU rendering and see the playground examples. You can also already try out the WebGPU API to develop your own rendering applications. Use Navigator GPU to access the GPU adapter and to get the GPU device. Do that in vanilla JavaScript or install the WebGPU types package to use it with TypeScript. Given the WebGPU examples, you can start implementing your own rendering application. So I thought it's good to dive into WebGPU and build my own very basic 3D rendering engine. At first, one must know how objects are being rendered. The primitive object is a triangle. You specify a list of vertex positions within the coordinates. A closed triangle will create a fragment which will be rendered. The order of the vertices creates a winding direction. The winding direction is being used for a culling mechanism. Having a winding direction counterclockwise means you are facing the fragment and it will be rendered. A winding direction clockwise means you are not facing the fragment and it will not be rendered. That way you can create all kinds of 3D shapes. Also you must have some kind of information about the appearance of the object, at least having it a color. Then you know how to draw the fragment. Also there are UVs, which are an unwrapped version of your 3D object. With that you can map textures on the object. It just so happens that I have copy pasted a cube example from the internet. It has all those informations encoded in an array. And I have also created my own example, which is a pyramid. Now that you know how your 3D objects are being rendered, the objects must also have a position and an orientation within the 3D space. This is done via linear algebra, using transformation matrices. Multiplying all vertex positions with such a matrix changes the position and the rotation of the whole object within the 3D space. This is done every frame, as the objects are changing its state within the 3D world. Keeping and determining the state of the objects is done outside of the GPU. Use linear algebra libraries such as GL matrix, which are doing all the math for you. The transformation matrix is used together with the camera information to determine where and how the 3D object should be rendered on the canvas. Speaking of the camera, it also has a position, a looking direction and can be rotated. This can also change over time. For the camera, one also uses a projection matrix which has the attributes aspect ratio, field of view, near and far values. All objects which are within the camera are projected on a canvas frame. For the WebGPU renderer engine, I have created a camera class which contains these matrices and which I can use to implement camera controls, such as zoom and rotate around the origin. And now about shaders. Shaders are computation instructions to the GPU. You upload all informations of the 3D world to the GPU memory, such as vertices, colors, transformation matrices, textures, environment information such as lights, etc. The shaders have access to this information and can do computations based on them. As a very basic example, they compute the vertex position given the transformation and compute values for all pixels given other information such as colors. A shader has the information of the global world and can create graphical effects based on them. There are many shaders computing at the same time in order to render the frame as fast as possible. The material of your 3D object determines which shaders are used and what they are calculating. I have copy paste shaders from the internet. As you can see they have their own syntax, here it is WGSL. One shader is calculating the position of a vertex using the provided model projection matrix. The other one is just determining the current pixel's color. So the concept of rendering a 3D scene is that you update all data which does not change over time to the GPU memory, as already mentioned vertices and so on. Then you have a renderer, which has a function to draw a frame. Within this function you initialize the rendering command chain. Then you instruct all the objects to update their transformation given a camera and to give commands to draw themselves. 
After that you execute the frame rendering and draw to the canvas. So having a look at how to initialize objects, you see that we have to do a lot of WebGPU instructions. At first we define a rendering pipeline. Here we define that we are calculating vertices and fragments with the previous mentioned shaders. Also you set a lot of low level values such as locations of positions, offset and number formats within the buffers, the primitive types and cull mode. And also we create buffers, one with the usage type uniform, copy destination for the transformation matrix, one with the usage type vertices for the vertices array. We upload the vertices array immediately to the GPU memory. We also need a bind group so the shader knows where to find the transformation matrix. Within the draw function, the object updates its transformation given a perspective from the outside. Then setting the current rendering pipeline. Write the current transformation matrix to the proper buffer, set the current vertex buffer as the object's own buffer, set the binding group and call the draw function. All 3D objects give the instructions how to draw themselves. To initialize the renderer, one must provide a canvas. With the canvas you create a swap chain. This is how the GPU rendered frames are transmitted from the GPU memory to the system memory and then to the canvas. You also define a render pass descriptor with several attachments. In the frame function just do some initialization, tell all the objects of the scene to draw themselves and then submit the command chain and let the GPU do the work. Now we have all the ingredients to build our own rendering engine. We have a scene with 3D objects, a camera, a renderer, a canvas where the frames are displayed and at last we need an animation loop to instruct the renderer to draw a frame for us every time we are able to do so. You can call the request animation frame function to request the browser to do an animation frame. Here you do your animation things, move and rotate the objects as you wish, tell the renderer to render all the things and request an animation frame again. That's the animation loop. I have added some mouse controls for the camera, created some buttons to add either a cube or a pyramid and this is the result. A very basic 3D rendering engine using a web GPU.